Hello, St. Matthew's United Methodist Church, and those of you who are joining us uh, online, uh, I'm Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. And we made it through Easter weekend. We did, we did. (laughs) Trains, that's right, I had to deal with trains this morning on the way to work. Anyway, uh, I got coffee, so I'll make it. Um, Super excited to be back, super excited to to go through this week's topic on Easter. Um, And for those of you who watched uh, Nato Libre, it's Easter's. That's what I call it, uh, because I just love that movie so much. But anyway, um, uh, you know, I thought service was great this weekend. Oh, sure. I thought Holy Week stuff was really good too. I had a I had a good time. Uh, yeah, the 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 music and you know the the music of Easter always makes it always sells it for me. I mean, uh, we started our you know our sanctuary worship with the bell with the bell choir. You know, and that and that's that's how Easter should start. You know, <laughs> uh, and then you know we have to sing Christ, Christ the Lord is risen today, mm-hmm. and so that just puts you there. And then the the lilies and and uh, you know just seeing everybody, it's a wonderful day. And it wasn't cloudy, so it was like all the the windows when you got to preach. When I was preaching, it was still dark. It was still dark. Uh, yeah. So real quick uh, before we get into our topic. Um, so uh, this is the first time that I got to preach. Uh, I got to lead uh, Good Friday service, and then I got to lead Easter sunrise service. So Dave was like, hey, Kelly, you can be the last person everybody sees. You can be the first person everybody sees. And I was like, I don't know if I want that responsibility, but here we go. Um, so for me, it was... Yeah, it, welcome to being a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for me, it was it was really cool. Um uh, full of nerves, full of anxiety this weekend. Like it was just, I was all over the place. Uh, but it was a blast. Had a great time. Um, and uh, so, anyway, without further ado, haha, lights on. Dave, why don't you tell us about Easter's and what Easter is? So Easter is the, uh, all about the resurrection of Jesus. Mm. I mean, central central point. It's it's resurrection. Now, from that, I mean, we learn about eternal life and what that means, and we learn about uh, hope and what that means and how all of that is tied together. Uh, it's interesting when you read the Easter accounts in, in the Gospels, they tell what's happening, tell what happened that day. Uh, the interpretation and the meaning, you, you, read, you read how the, the early church um, interpreted that and what they got out of that. Um, so if you're wanting to, to read about what happened, you read in the gospels, if you're wanting to read about how the church kind of interprets that and how you, how you hear about eternal life and hope. And now the early church, um, drew that meaning from the events of Easter. You have to read into the, you know, the rest of the new Testament, um, Mm -hmm. kind of, kind of, uh, the, the bits there. So the, you know, the, the firsthand kind of narrative of what happened is in the Gospels, but then the meaning comes later in the New Testament. Yeah, there's there's a lot, too, outside of those, like, church history-wise, where even the disciples in their journeys and where they where God takes them, where they die, how they die, mm-hmm. uh, there's all this, this really interesting stuff. And one of the things I'm always so encouraged by, uh, especially now, you know, because I'm I'm okay with my brain and like that I can have, uh, as I'm reading things, I can go, Oh, maybe I don't have to, uh, uh, think it's the way that, uh, I assumed it was or, or that everything is the same, that everybody had like a universal message. There's some things that are universally binding, but the way that those, those truths would manifest in people's lives and what they would go do and who they would minister to and where they would minister to Mm -hmm. and how they would do that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really unique and cool stuff that happens mm-hmm. where it's not like a, it's not the thing that, uh, this isn't to dunk on like <laughs> what we do now, but it's not like a standardized thing. Like there's, there's, there's some things about it that are, that are, but you've got disciples going to like Ethiopia and India and other parts of Europe, like now Turkey mm-hmm. and Paul stays in Rome, uh, but but I'm just kidding. He's on the outskirts. But even those people, like they're all different, right? And and so it's cool to me that when I think about trying to share the good news of Easter and the gospel, right message, um, that it's not some cookie cutter thing, Mm-mm. right? Like living that out and sharing that with people is going to be 
pretty diverse and, and interesting. Although it's not cookie cutter, though, mm-hmm. the early church um, revolved around the resurrection. 100%. Um, it was the resurrection that colored uh, the church, and it was the resurrection that really had the meaning right. uh, for, for people. Mm-hmm. Um, the early church chose to, to meet on Sunday um, because of the resurrection. Yep. That was specifically, I mean, if you think about the Jewish uh, Sabbath, that was Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those early Christians said, no, and we're going to celebrate the resurrection every Sunday. Right. Uh, and so we, you know, we, we claim we have a name, uh, we call ourselves or, or called the Easter people mm-hmm. uh, because it's the resurrection that is the, the center of the world. Um, yeah, for us. Would you would you add, Dave? Would you say then? This is an actual question. Uh, like that's the that's the domino. Yeah. Right. The resurrection is like the domino. Then that like once that event happens, it's like it is. Phew! <laughs> it is. It is central to our theology. It is mm-hmm. central to kind of the, I guess you could say, the success, the the spreading of the of the good right. news. It became um, our identity. Yeah. became who we are. Yeah. Um, you know, at that point the movement changed from from being, you know, just among the 12 and then we get the Holy Spirit that really kind of fuels the the flames, mm-hmm. but it's the resurrection that is the I yeah. mean, the 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 highest holy day. Yeah. is is what I called it on Sunday. I should clarify too, when I say cookie cutter, I don't mean that the truths of the faith or the things that united the people of the faith weren't the same. They were what I meant is, you said it better than me, which was um, the resurrection happens, and they're still in hiding. Like, there's, we'll get mm-hmm. maybe into that a little bit today, but uh, then the Holy Spirit comes, Pentecost happens, and then they're just, like, out of a cannon. I mean, they're going everywhere to everyone, and, like, and they're moving. Like, it's, it's, those first, what, 150 years are just fascinating well, the first 300 years 300, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's so cool well and then it changes after that when um you know that's the point when rome accepts christianity as you know the official religion <laughs> can't beat them and so <laughs> <Gotta join them. laughs> well and and so i mean if you're looking at at the historical kind of kind of uh progress or movement of christianity that those first th- 300 years are really fascinating in that it's an underground movement and then after that um, or at that at the point where where it's accepted uh, as the Roman, re- you know, official religion, then everything had to be standardized, and all of the differences that appeared in the three hundred years had to be kind of stamped out. Cookie cutter, that's where it comes from. <laughs> had to be stamped out, and you know, all mm-hmm. of the claims of heresy and stuff as these people just tried to figure out and and add meaning to to what they've heard. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so it was standardized. And so we have the, you know, the councils that did that and there's all kind of story there. That yeah. I'm not going to get into, we're not going to get into but, today, but anyway, so the history, um, you know, of it taking off in those first 300 years to the point where then it becomes the official language and then takes off as far as the number who are practicing it, you know, mm-hmm. exponentially after that. Right. Uh, but it's also changed, uh, a lot, uh, mm-hmm. in, in, in its expression at that point. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I should say this and then we'll get into Easter. Easter, uh, <laughs> is I'm encouraged by how, um, the expression of Christianity changes. And for those of you who are watching and listening to this, I think it's important that we remember that God is a God of also doing new things and there's new expressions sure. of faith. And so, don't be discouraged if what you feel called to do or led to do or how you participate in community looks different sometimes. Um, I think there's value in that. Um, cause like you said, it's, it's, and even in those 300 years, like there's just so much there, uh, that's just really cool and unique and different and it's just wonderful. Um, and then it gets standardized and it gets all jacked up. Just kidding. Uh, I'm not bitter at all. Uh, but but anyway, so like I just I, I love that because it's just Jesus is like go in love and and share the good news and it's so feel like you have permission and license to do that in the circles and the places that you are, um and uh because uh, for me a long time it was like well if it doesn't look like this and it doesn't sound like this and you're not doing it in these types of places then you're doing it wrong and I was like 
Yeah, but Jesus ate with the tax collectors and the sinners and all the terrible people that you guys would say were terrible, and he partied with them, and they they let like all the things, right? And I was like, oh, I'm getting caught up in the, the I need to honor what I feel like I'm being asked to go do with the people I'm supposed to go do it with and for. Um, and that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, so Easter, resurrection. It's yes. about the resurrection. Cool. Yes. And cookie cutters. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so your sermon. Talk, talk to us a little bit about kind of the, the, the nucleus of your sermon, where it started, and, and kind of what yes. you were trying to accomplish. So as I was reading and studying and, and preparing for the, the sermon... Um, Easter sermons are always, they have their own bit of anxiety with them and pressure and all of that kind of stuff because it's the big day and you want to, um, you, you know, you're, you're going to have a full house and you're going to, you know, all of this. So there's that extra stuff that's with Easter. Not that every sermon's not filled mm-hmm. with some anxiety as well, but Easter, all of that ratchets up. Yeah. But as I was preparing, I got struck by the emptiness of the tomb mm. and how you know, this is a celebration of emptiness, which seems weird. <laughs> yeah, we say it like that, man. You know? It does. It does. <laughs> you, we're celebrating a hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an empty <laughs> hole in the ground. Uh, of course, there's there. You know, there's more to the story than that. But at its heart, you know, we we just don't have all the stuff that we have at Christmas that we're you know celebrating all the images and whatnot. We mm-hmm. have the empty tomb um, that's there. And then I started to think, well. That emptiness that occurred that first day, uh, 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 the day of the resurrection, that Sunday, yeah, there was a there was a different kind of emptiness on Saturday. Um, you know, Saturday was was full of despair and mm. grief and mourning, um, and you know, kind of a, a, a the expression of what now, um, not knowing the future. Yeah, uh, that kind of darkness and that kind of emptiness that that folks feel as their hopes and dreams had been kind of yanked from them. Yeah, um, and so the so on Sunday I I started playing with that idea of of what how was the emptiness of Saturday different from the emptiness of some Sunday, um, and you know how does the emptiness of Sunday bring us hope, and the emptiness of Saturday bring us despair. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, the, the, and then the answer of course is that the resurrection that Christ is, is risen, uh, that Rome, um, and the Jewish leaders had given all that they had to try to kill Jesus <laughs> and they failed. I, I, you know, it's like, hit him again. And it's like, can't kill him. He's invincible. <laughs> like he just won't die. Like, yeah. and, uh, yeah, it's it's funny when I was sitting there and you started doing that, I was like, "Oh, my interest is peaked." Uh, <laughs> not because I, I mean, because I know you well enough. And for for those of you who don't know, you know, Pastor David Phelps, uh, David's awesome, brilliant, and and so anytime he says something and you're like, "Wait a second, it's always going to make sense at some point." Like it's it's. Uh, uh, but, part of my preaching style is to, <laughs> to confuse people at the beginning. Yeah, see, I <laughs> do then, that too. And, the, and then iron it out later. I confuse people. I just don't make <laughs> it make sense later. Um, but I loved that you used those narratives of the emptiness and the contrast of both emptiness, right? Because Jesus resurrects and then shows up later, and so the emptiness now has meaning. Mm-hmm. Um and I loved how you title that together because it it is the, uh, and then we'll talk about my sermon. Uh, but but the grief of that day and the hopelessness of that day and the danger and all the horrific things that occur, mm-hmm. it's like there's finality in all that too. Mm-hmm. Like that's another thing that I was thinking when you were preaching of the finality of that emptiness, the void, right? Um, I didn't do this on on my sermon, but one of the things I was kicking around was you know, in Genesis, when when the narrative talks about creation, and it says that, you know, the Lord God hovered over the chaos. Mm-hmm. And so for me, like, when Jesus dies, it's chaos. Really There's is. no yeah. order. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just chaos. And I'm like, wow, that's heavy. And then, you know, Mary's there, and all the disciples, like, his mother's there, and, like, all the disciples are there, and I'm like, this is, this is a brutal day. And then you're like, and then 
there's an empty hole in the ground. And I'm like, what? Hold on. <laughs> and, and then you just masterfully, like you bring it back together and you go, uh-huh, because Jesus accomplished what Jesus said Jesus was going to do. And I'm like, whoa. Um, now, I, I think I like to put myself in Bible stories uh, for better or for worse. And like part of me thinks that I would have been so mad. I would have been like, why didn't you just do it right away? Like, why do we have to sit here for a day and a half and be like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and Jesus is like, surprise, I'm here. I told you. Like, you didn't believe me. Uh, but, you know, here, Thomas, come here. Touch my hands. Um, but the thing you're talking about, um, the other thing I loved about what you did is it was so relatable for me because even as a Christian who believes in the resurrection, there are seasons of life where I feel like that Saturday. Mm -hmm. Of course. Right. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So now forever I get to go, oh, this emptiness feels like that Saturday. Well, hold on to hope because Sundays are coming <laughs> uh -huh. and, and we'll get there. Uh, and I'll attribute yeah. it to you. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a famous uh, sermon that I'm just talking about off the top of my head, so I can't attribute it. But uh, it's a famous sermon that that goes, all of this bad stuff happens on Friday, but Sunday's coming. Mm. And so in, in the sermon, he goes through and he just recounts all of the ugliness of the day and relates it to the ugliness of today. Mm -hmm. And then well, at good. the end of every phrase, he says, but Sunday's coming. Mm. And so it's just, I mean, he goes on and on, and it's a powerful, powerful sermon. Because this is a powerful event, um, you know, that darkness that we, or emptiness that we kind of ex express and, and experience, it's all defeated um, by the resurrection. Yeah. Uh, every bit of it. It's, it's the risen Christ who brings us hope in the midst of that darkness. Um, and which is why we are Easter people, because we always have that hope. We know that Jesus is always at work and that the tide will turn mm -hmm. and the tide will turn. I love, I love, so real quick, <laughs> Kelly, lie. Yes. Uh, Cause I have a mic. Um, but this is one of the reasons I love how we did Lent here and we did the podcast series and the sermon series you constructed, and then we did Holy Week, and then we're leading up into this. And so one of the things I'm thinking about as you're talking is, you know, I can't, I, when I'm trying to talk to God about the chaos in my life of what's going wrong, one of the gifts of this season we just came out of, and then sitting in that Saturday and that chaos and that mm -hmm. that emptiness, that defeatedness, right, that stress, that anxiety, the, the fear, all the things, right, is I get to now come to this week with a list of like, hey, God, <laughs> let's work on this stuff <laughs> in the resurrected place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And what's cool is like you get to go into that going, what is actually bothering me? Because, yes, Sunday's coming. But, you know, then I do the thing where I'm like, well, why don't I live like it's su Sunday's here every every day? And it's like because life happens and and we're going through things and, and we're on a journey in our relationship with God. We're going through sanctification, all these other things, right? But like getting to sit in that for a minute and go, God, where is the chaos in my life? Where are the places where like I don't think you've risen in those or you've defeated those things? What mm -hmm. what am I holding on to that's like keeping me from living into this mm -hmm. resurrected place, if you mm -hmm. will, the power that you have? Um, and so like listening to you do that. I'm like, oh, that's helpful vocabulary for me. I can, I can use that. That's wonderful. Good. Um, so good job, good job. I don't want to talk about mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I preached on Sunday too, um, and like I said, I was, I was, you know, uh, maybe this will encourage people who listen to watch this. Like, I. Uh, I did not have it together. I tried and I prepped and I was just anxious and nervous. And to Dave's point before, um, you care about it every time you do it. Uh, you know, uh, I've been loving, lovingly referred to by Dave and his wife, Christy, as the guts guy. So like I, I preach from my guts. Like if I don't feel it, like it's, it's tough for me. Mm -hmm. um, but you do culturally, we know that there will be people who are watching 
or coming to church, there's a, there's a higher chance that are not initiated in a community. They're not connected to what we're doing. And so there's that added weight and pressure of not my own performance. I just want to make sure that I communicate the love of God well. Mm -hmm. And so there's this thing that we go through, right? Where it's like, because if you don't, (laughs) this may be the only time somebody hears this. And I'm like, God, like, and so it just adds and it adds and it adds. And so, you know, you got to keep, I got to keep the ego in check and okay, God, like, you do what you want with this. Like, I'm going to do my best to get out of the way. Um, you know, I, I try to live my life by this. It's like, if it went well, God God did it. And if it didn't, I did something wrong. Uh, but, but in that, you know, when we're preaching these messages and we're getting ready for this week, like, we are going into it knowing that, like, we may interact with people for the first and only time. And that's important. Mm-hmm. Like, we care mm-hmm. about that, mm-hmm. right? Um, so for me, when I was, when I was preaching, I... I one of the things that was really important to me, so I came out of John um, 18, 1 through 20, and it's uh, the disciple whom Jesus loved and Peter have a foot race to the tomb. Now, I love this because the disciple whom Jesus loved, I'm like, I'm not misreading that, right? Like, like, why would you refer to yourself that way? I read a commentary last week that said that, like, it was humility. I'm like, what? That's not a humility. That's that's this person saying they're better than everybody else. Anyway, yep. um, but I like to think that like it's John, uh, John tripped Peter on the way because then the disciple whom Jesus loved also wins, uh, and we need to know that why. Um, but they go with Mary, um, or Mary has gone first, has reported that the tomb is empty, um, and they're all caught in the emptiness of the day before, which is who took his body, Mm -hmm. Um, which is like awful. Look at a horrible feeling to have of like, he shouldn't have died. Y'all did horrible things to him. Now we just want to bury him, you know, as a Jewish man, like let him have his burial. And then somebody took his body. It's just awful. Uh, So then they all go back. uh, And I made it a point to point out that like the disciples leave in their grief and they're figuring it out. And it's also dangerous to be, there's all these other contextual things happening, but Mary stays and Mary is beside herself outside the tomb and she starts weeping. Um, Now I don't know what her hair looked like. I can make some guesses that it was probably long, Um, but she's like crying, crying, right? She's beside herself and she leans over in the ground, hole in the ground and she's weeping and she sees two angels in the tomb. Now I pointed this out because she just talks to them like it's a regular occurrence. That's how I read it. And I'm like, that's odd. You know, maybe like there's tears in your face. You can't see, but there's two celestial bodies, one at the head, one at the feet. And you're just like, where did you put them? Mm-hmm. I'm like, <laughs> you see angels every day. Is this just like how this goes? And they're like, he's not here. He's risen. And I'm like, that's interesting. And then she turns around and uh, Jesus is standing there and she talks to Jesus like, cause she thinks he's the gardener. <laughs> and I love this because I think of Christmas, like Jesus comes as an infant, not a ruler, not a, a th- like power and status and like get in line as a baby. And then Jesus shows up as like a gardener. <laughs> and it's like, hey, Mary. And she goes, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I love that for me because there's parts of me that want the, the sin in me, the difficult things I struggle with, is I want Jesus to be distant and I want Jesus to be, um, you know, like in charge and telling me how it is. And instead Jesus is like, Mary Mm -hmm. and he's approachable and there's a normalcy there to the context of the relay. I just love it. And I'm like, Oh, so Jesus doesn't like come back and like, Oh, like all the things like he's just there, like wanting to, to talk to Mary whom he loves. Um, and I love that. And so for me with Easter, um, there's this, there's these super powerful things that I could not accomplish for myself that happen. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus shows up like, hey, let's hang out. Like, I love you. And I'm like, but you just, 
you did you just did all the things that she's like, and now I want to hang out. Like, let's hang out. And I'm like, that's just so cool. Um, and so I, I share that. Um, and I think I, what I was trying to accomplish on Sunday by sharing all that was, you know, going through Lent, going through Holy Week, you talked about Christmas and yours, which I thought was wonderful too. Um, God is not distant and far away and aloof um, and not wanting to relate or to walk with us. And Jesus interacts with Mary and like then commissions her with the gospel from a place of like relatability. Mm -hmm. Um, And for me, that gives me hope that when Jesus is, I'm going to go do this thing that you can't do and I'm going to accomplish it. And then I'm going to show up and be like, Hey, go do the things I taught you to do. But all right, like we going together. And she's like, yep, let's go together. I'm like, this is awesome. Uh, uh, That Mary didn't, go through extra hoops. She didn't like, she wasn't like, she was mid cry and weep. She wasn't like put together. She didn't Mm -hmm. have her Sunday best on. She wasn't like, you know, uh, she was a mess, hot mess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Jesus is still there. Loving her with her commissioning her. And for me, it gives me hope in my own life where I'm like, Oh, I can be a hot mess and dealing with the emptiness of Saturday. And I'm still able to be used and to be effective and I'm loved and I matter. Um, And so that's what I was trying to accomplish someday. I don't think that's how it sounded, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, for what it's worth. Yeah. It was, you you know, it was uh, the, the the first Easter sermon that we preach as pastors. That's a, that's something that we will always remember. (sighs) And we'll, we'll, Because we we begin to wrestle um, with kind of the the central point of the faith, mm-hmm. um, that is that there's hope and that what we see today is not what we'll see tomorrow. That mm. Christ is at work in the world. Um, that Christ, uh, you know, defeated the the biggest superpower in the world of his time, and so there's no superpowers today that will stand against him. Yeah. Um. So it, it's a big, you know, Easter's a big deal. <laughs> And 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 the that first as a pastor, um, that first Easter sermon's a big deal because we're we're struggling with that and all of the pressures and all of the the stuff that goes along with it. So good job, man. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'd say this too, like one of the things about Easter, and this isn't about my sermon anymore, your sermon. It's it's about that um perspective is really important. Because yes, the, the the superpowers defeated and, and the principalities of the world that are functioning behind the scenes that are causing the problems. But I I feel like I get caught up a lot in like the peripheral and not the central point. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus resurrects, like sin is like officially defeated. Like it's mm, it, a- it, actually it was defeated on Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. But the but the the, aton- the atonement happened hundred percent. So for us, though, for me, though, I at times live my life where I don't think or behave that way. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I want Jesus to go right into Jerusalem and like kick the Romans out. And Jesus is like, I didn't come to fight Rome. And I'm like, then why are you even here? (laughs) Because see, I mean, you started this this conversation by saying you wish there didn't there wasn't a Saturday (laughs) that we could have skipped that. (laughs) But look at all of what that gives us, right? you know, because we walk through Saturday, Mm -hmm. you know, we have that connection to the pain of an anguish and know what we're being saved from. Right. uh, Through the resurrection. Right. And the, and the finale of that and, and, you know, from, from the death and the completed work of the destruction of sin and then the resurrection um, and the way that Jesus has made to God. Right. Um, I love the story of it because it helps me refocus on what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Paul writes later, and this is something I wish culturally we would do, which is like, we don't war against flesh, flesh and blood. People are not our enemy regardless of their political takes, (laughs) regardless of like what they like. Sin is the issue. Sin has always been the problem. And like what we're, what we're talking about and what we're praying that Jesus has victory in it's not that Jesus would come control people. It's that people would be set free from the 
death and the destruction and the bondage of sin. And like too often, I feel like for me, I'm like, Hosanna, <laughs> like, yay, you're here. And then he goes right by David's castle, the place of rule. And like, and everybody's like, wait, what? Hold on. Wait, wait, we, uh huh? <laughs> you're supposed to free us from Rome. And Judas is like, bro, what are you doing? And then Jesus is like, that's not, that's not why I'm here. And so for me, when that perspective gets refocused, um, and I'm like, that's right. God, you have dominion in my life. You have saved me from these things, from sin, from the power of sin. And I now have a choice and or or a way to have a relationship with you so that we can work through these things together. It gives me hope. And knowing that like all the things that I've come through, if I can, if I can come out of it with God, anybody can come out of it with God, right? And if God can use me in ways that I also see fruit and power in. God can do that with anybody. Mm -hmm. And so I have hope that, oh, Jesus, you didn't lose. When we look around at the world and we see all the awful things. I mean, yesterday, right? Yesterday, there was another horrible thing that happened in the States. It's like every day, there's like something. And I'm like, oh, you have it. You're not defeated. Oh, sin didn't win. You're still at work. Um. Uh, and we and in the blessing there too, and this will be like the last thing I say here is we get to be a part of that solution too. So we're not bystanders in like, okay, Jesus, we'll just sit here and wait for you to fix it all. Jesus is like, no, 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 I want you to participate and help. Mm -hmm. Um, man, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just not we're not just praying Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> uh, if you love that song, that's great, but <laughs> but um, we. Jesus calls us to be part of the solution and be part of, well, to be disciples um, is, is Jesus called to us. Yes. Jesus is at work and, and often that work is, is putting blisters and calluses on our hands mm -hmm. um, um, as we, as we do it. So yeah, we're, we're working in cooperation with Christ and in cooperation with the Holy spirit um, to do the level best we can to, to be followers uh, of Jesus Christ. I, uh, because because I need simple <laughs> images to make this make sense. I feel like as a believer, I went from living in that Saturday where chaos was running and, and my perception was like the darkness and the depths of that were just to now Sunday, which is like, oh, Jesus is resurrected and we're together, right? Mm -hmm. Christians are bridge builders between the two. So we live in a, in a perspective, in a place where it's like, we know that Sunday has happened, but not everybody does. Mm -hmm. And so there's people who are still living like Saturday has happened. And so my responsibility and role, uh, being a believer, being a Christian, is to help people get from Saturday to Sunday. Now, that doesn't mean you make them or like you just tell them they're terrible and horrible and whatever. What I'm getting at is God has called us all in ways. Now, the, the unifying thing, language there's always love and um but the circles we're in the places of the people you meet and where you go do that will be unique to your person and what you've been called to do um but that helps me go oh that's right and we remember the pain of saturday mm -hmm. because the reason i don't like wake up and everything isn't perfect because I, part of it i think is like god's like my heart hurts because i want everybody to be with me here so Kelly, like, not everybody's here. Mm -hmm. So get up and get going. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's people we got to take from Saturday to Sunday. Like, hey, come cross this bridge with me. Like, like we're going. Um, but yeah, I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I haven't finished my coffee yet, but it's kind of cold. I think mine's mine's done. Yeah. <laughs> when did you finish it? Like midway? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I we're gonna start having a poll on like how long it takes Dave to finish his coffee. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I loved, I loved your message Sunday. I loved Thanks. everything we got to go through this week. Um, and uh, I don't know about you, but I was motivated during Lent to get stuff done. I like, I'm like chomping at the bit, man. I'm ready to go. Like we've got a lot of cool stuff happening here too. We've got stuff happening. We've got stuff planned. Things are things are rocking here. Yeah, yeah they surely it's, are. It's Christ really is cool. alive. Amen, brother. Amen.
So uh, closing thought here is for those of you who are watching um, or listening, uh, wherever you are, um, if you're looking out around the world, right, or in the circles you're in, or even in your own life, and you feel like you're just caught in Saturday, hold on. Um, connect with us. Connect with with St. Matthew's in whatever way. Like we'd love to talk to you um, and and develop relationship with you. But also know that like, um, you know, Saturday isn't the final word on what's happening. Sunday comes. Jesus has won, um, and Jesus is with you and for you. And so it's um, your despair. A hope gives into hope. Um, not just hope, but like expectant hope that Jesus mm-hmm. is at work, that Jesus is mm-hmm. trustworthy, that Jesus is accomplishing what Jesus said. And I you know, hope you move from that part of the bridge <laughs> and the chaos of all that to the paradise, to Eden, to, mm-hmm. to being in relationship with Jesus and then going and telling others. Amen. 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 I'm Pastor Kelly. And I'm Pastor Dave. And we will catch you on the next one.